All right, Rapunzel said it best. We're looking to have the best day ever in Disney World this year. And the best day ever starts right here. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Vlog, and today we're covering the 20 ways to guarantee your best Walt Disney World trip. Planning a Disney World vacation is not for the weak of heart. It's a lot of figuring out budgets, deciding trip timelines, scheduling a loose itinerary, reserving restaurants ahead of time, the list goes on, as you know. But I'm here to break it all down for you so that it is easy, easy, easy. You can do this. It's going to be amazing. Let's get started. By the way, want to get all the info I'm about to share in this video in an easy cheat sheet? Head to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash best trip and you'll get a free PDF sent straight to your inbox. When you drop your email, we'll also sign you up for our DFB newsletter so you can stay up to date on all the latest news coming out of the Disney parks. Don't worry about taking notes. Just head to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash best trip and you'll get that list. All right, number one, we're talking about booking a room at a hotel with multiple complimentary transportation options. Got it? Okay, basically what I mean by that is book a room with lots of ways to get from here to there. Buses, Skyliners, monorails, boats, your very own feet. It's nice to have a variety of options when you're relying on Disney's complimentary transportation to get you to and from the parks. Although the Disney buses are a great mode of transportation, sometimes they get pretty packed and they may slow down your arrival time. So hotels with multiple transportation options give you a little more freedom in deciding how you want to travel to and from the parks. Not to mention, Disney's complimentary transportation isn't just a means to an end. For some guests, they'd feel like they were missing out if they weren't able to ride the monorail or the Skyliner. Even the bus services can create nostalgia, what with their theme soundtracks and official you'll be home soon announcer voice after a long day in the parks. If you're staying at a hotel that only has one mode of transportation, like the Disney buses, you can always invest in a ride share, like an Uber or Lyft, on the days when you need to get into the park ASAP. Check out every transportation option available for each hotel by watching our Ranking Every Disney Resort DFB video after you finish this one, of course. Next on our list may sound a little counterintuitive, but it's do less. It's easy to get into the mindset of I have to accomplish everything during my trip for it to be worth it and to be successful. But some of those most memorable moments are the little ones when you stop to take a breather or when you do something that's unexpected that really never was planned. While you're making your Disney itinerary, give yourself some wiggle room to slow down for a minute. Some of my favorite memories from the past have been relaxing on the beach at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort or stopping to listen to the Dapper Dans on Main Street USA in Magic Kingdom, or even resting resting on a bench near the Canada Waterfall in Epcot's World Showcase. I can remember an incredible day in Animal Kingdom. It was pouring down rain. It was really, really cold. It was just a bummer of a day. But then I went over to the Dawa Bar and this great cast member bartender made me this super cool drink that was like gingerbread or something. It was so good. And I just sat there and sipped on this drink and warmed up and watched all the people walk by. And it was just a really, really nice experience. And I I know not everybody has time to do that, but if you have a little wiggle room in your trip itinerary, then you give yourself the opportunity to just slow down, relax, and enjoy the fact that you're on vacation. So don't be afraid to do less. Who knows, those quiet moments just might end up being some of your favorites and the ones that your family remembers forever. Number three on our list is try leaving a few things up to chance. It's near impossible to plan an impromptu Disney trip nowadays, but that doesn't mean you're not allowed to stray from your itinerary and try something you hadn't thought to add to your schedule beforehand. Your Disney hotel might inform you of an activity that you want to squeeze into your schedule, like a professional painting class or an early morning yoga session, or you might find a last minute reservation for a restaurant on the My Disney Experience app, which happens from time to time. I love leaving a few meals open so that I can just kind of go to my Disney experience, put in the time and pick whatever restaurant sounds the most interesting to me. Whatever the case may be, don't worry about leaving a chunk of time in your schedule that's more up to chance. You'll fill the time while you're there, trust me. Next on our list is super, super important for anyone who doesn't want to be a cranky, grumpy loser on their vacation. Okay, is that all of us? I think so. Disney is exciting. Sometimes it's hard to want to sleep when there's so much to be explored, especially on your first full park day. But we're going to recommend that you don't venture too far from your regular sleep schedule. This isn't a hundred meter dash. It's a marathon and you're going to want to pace yourself and your group accordingly. If you got kids, let them nap. If you know you need eight hours of sleep, get eight hours of sleep. Grumpiness and 
overstimulation end as badly as you think they will. They end even worse on vacation and in Disney World than they do at home. And adrenaline can only fuel you for so long. I know most of us are running on fumes by the end of a Disney World trip, so plan ahead. Consider breaking up some parks into two days instead of crowding it all into one hectic day. Schedule in those break days as well and keep yourself from experiencing park burnout. Stick to your schedule. Eat when you usually eat. Sleep when you usually sleep. Don't drink a whole lot more than you normally drink. I know you're going to drink a little more than you normally drink, but try not to go overboard too often. Try to eat a salad now and again, or at least some fruit or something. Believe me, there's nothing worse than going super wild on the food and just eating multiple meals every single day. I have experience with this. Your tummy just does not reward that, believe me. So be careful. Don't venture too far from your regular schedule and what you regularly do, and you're going to feel much, much better. All right, next on our list is to leave a free day at the end of your trip. Along with planning some wiggle room in your itinerary, you might also want to consider just a flat out free day on the last day of your vacation. Did you want to complete one of the Epcot Festival scavenger hunts, but were too busy hitting up the rides and trying different foods? Well, then you got an extra day to go back and scavenge away, I guess. <laughs> Did you absolutely love the Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run at Disney's Hollywood Studios and you want to re-ride and try your hand at another job on the ship? Well, extra time will give you a round two for your favorite attractions. Or maybe you haven't gotten to explore your hotel and all its amenities yet. Now's your chance. Maybe there's a restaurant you want to try, or maybe you just want to sleep in for the day and spend the day at the pool. These are all things you can do if you build in an extra free day at the end. Just be careful. If you decide to slip back into one of the parks, you're still going to need to make that park pass reservation. During non-busy seasons, you may still be able to make a park pass reservation a few days before your trip, but in most cases, you need to make that reservation as soon as you can. So check out all the park offerings, decide if there's a park you might want to hit up again on that extra free day, or decide if you want to stick around your hotel or the Disney Springs area instead. Or maybe you want to have a water park day. The world is your oyster. Next on our list is stepping out of your comfort zone when it comes to food. Here at Disney Food Blog, we're all about trying every food option Disney has available. And that means we end up stepping out of our comfort zones a lot. That's actually one thing I really, really am grateful for doing this blog, doing this YouTube channel is I'm a very picky eater and it really forces me to try everything, which is very, very cool. Because let's be honest, we all want to stick with what we know and love and nobody wants to try anything new to build up the list of things we know and love. But when we venture out and try a snack or a drink we wouldn't normally try, that adventurous spirit can really pay off. For example, the first time we crossed paths with the frothy ramen served up at Epcot's Festival of the Arts, we were a little bit hesitant to try the cold noodles, but these actually ended up being a nice, refreshing, and savory snack in the middle of the day, and it went on our best of the fest. Another festival treat that we were like, what? At first was the swine brine served up in Epcot's Food and Wine Festival. This was a drink made with bourbon, mustard, apple cider, and topped with an actual piggy wing, which for those of you who don't know what piggy wing is, it's kind of like a pork chicken wing kind of thing. But you know what? It was pretty good. Now, this step out of the box mentality does backfire on us more often than we care to admit. We've definitely tried our fair share of weird food that we just didn't vibe with. We've got a whole video on that for you. But that's what we're here for. We're here to make those sacrifices so you don't have to. Before you decide to try that new and strange food or beverage that you wouldn't normally try, search our DFB website review on it first to get a sneak peek as to what the flavors are like, what our initial reaction was to it, and if it'll be worth your money in the long run. Next on our list is knowing the restaurants that people don't usually recommend. Now that sounds a little strange, but I'll tell you what, all your friends and the people in your book club and your buddies at work, they all tell you the great restaurants they went to, but nobody warns you about the not so great restaurants. You don't want to accidentally go to a restaurant and drop a whole bunch of money on a mediocre experience. So make sure you do your research ahead of time. Look at those Yelp reviews, check out our worst restaurant videos on this channel. Consider ordering the DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining 2022, which will give you specific overviews and recommendations for each of the restaurants on Disney World property. You can even use the code YouTube for a discount on that purchase. That being said, consider all reviews and recommendations carefully, because what doesn't work for one person might work for someone else. We are very, very careful here at DFB to make sure that even if something wasn't our favorite, we explain why it wasn't our favorite and who it might really, really work for. Because you know what? There's no such thing as good or bad. It's just, is it right for you? For instance, I'm not a huge fan of the food at Rainforest Cafe in Disney Springs and Disney's Animal Kingdom. I think it's overpriced and it 
it just kind of tastes like a frozen meal to me. But I also know that the overall atmosphere at that restaurant is great for kids. They love it. So your kid might be super, super jazzed to go to this restaurant, and it doesn't really matter that the food isn't that great. He's having an awesome time. So study menus and atmosphere of the restaurants and keep an open mind. Even if some people really, really aren't vibing with the place, that doesn't mean it's not right for you and your family. We try to be really careful about that here at DFB. We tell you why a restaurant might not be great for you and why it might actually suit your needs. So stay tuned here to DFB Guide and check out our reviews over on Disney Food Blog as well. Now, speaking of restaurants, let's talk about booking those restaurants as soon as possible. There's nothing worse than not being able to get into a restaurant you've been dying to try in Disney World. And the thing that can give you the best chance of getting into that restaurant is just a little pre-planning. You just got to plan ahead. New restaurants like Space 220 and Epcot book early, early, early because of their atmosphere or the food or characters. Like Space 220 has that immersive space station thing going on, which you can't even see inside that restaurant unless you're eating there. And then there are the classic popular favorites, Be Our Guest Restaurant and Cinderella's Royal Table at Magic Kingdom. Those allow guests to step inside the castles from Disney's animated classic films. That's very, very cool and not something you're ever going to see unless you have that coveted reservation. If you know that one of the signature restaurants you're wanting to try is a hot reservation right now, make sure to book your table 60 days before your vacation. Reservations will open up for the 60-day window around 5.45 a.m. Eastern, so get those alarms set and ready. It's also a good idea to reserve any and all table service restaurants that you for sure know you want to eat at as far in advance as possible. Even if they're not considered the most popular restaurants on property, that doesn't matter. Still book them. Just book them. They're free to book. Just make sure you cancel 24 hours ahead so you're not charged as a no-show. This is especially important if you're planning on vacationing during those peak travel times, which I'll talk about later in this video. Finding a last minute dining reservation on the My Disney Experience app while you're wandering around the parks is more like a happy accident and fun spur of the moment decision, but you shouldn't rely on that last minute tactic for the restaurants you want to prioritize. So mark your reservation day on your calendar and as Scar would say, be prepared. Okay, number nine on our list is giving yourself a treat yourself day. Starting a Disney World budget before your trip is going to help you pace out your payments and prevent those sticker shock sucker punches. But the sooner you can start setting money aside for your vacation, the better. That way you can put back a little extra for a day of pampering and fun. Fun splurges like going to a special restaurant, hitting up an after hours event, or taking a little shopping spree around Disney Springs can make for some fun and memorable times. It's your vacation after all. You might as well live a little. You've saved up for it. If you need some more ideas for a potential treat yourself day, we've got a whole splurge section on the DFB, an amazing day in Disney World on $3,000 video. Now, don't worry. You don't need $3,000 to have a treat yourself day. A treat yourself day can also include just taking a day to relax, eat your favorite food, and maybe people watch. It's just whatever you want it to be. You're more than welcome to copy and paste some of the extra purchases we have in our video, though, for your own budget and itinerary. Okay, another way to guarantee your best Disney World trip is consider splurging for convenience. Spending a little extra moolah doesn't have to be reserved for the treat yourself day. It's also a good idea for when you want to make navigating the parks easier for yourself and your travel party. I mentioned earlier that ordering an Uber or Lyft could help you quickly get from the hotel to the park and back again if you want to skip those potentially massive lines for Disney's transportation. But you can also pay to skip over massive lines for rides by using the Disney Genie Plus service located in your My Disney. Disney Experience app. Disney Genie is a service that helps you maximize your time in the parks through both free and premium features. The premium ones like Disney Genie Plus and the individual attraction selections will grant guests access to a ride's lightning lane, which skips over the main queue line of an attraction. This means you'll be spending less time waiting in lines and more time going to other areas around the parks. Splurges like this aren't necessarily going to break the bank, but you will need to save back for them. Uber rides could range from $15 to $20 per one-way ride. Disney Genie Plus access costs $15 per person per day, and individual attraction selections, which are those fancier rides, the super, super popular ones, those fluctuate between $7 and $15 per ride per person. But if worrying less about lines is worth the difference for you, then get that piggy bank ready and start saving. Sometimes it's worth it to spend money to make your life easier. 
Next on our list to guarantee your best Disney World trip, go during a special event. Depending on when you're planning your trip, Disney World will more than likely be knees deep in a celebration or festival. They love that kind of stuff over there. Some special events are very well advertised, like the Halloween and Christmas seasons. Those have after hours Magic Kingdom parties, and they're gonna be an extra cost on top of your theme park ticket. Or you can choose to just pay for the after hours event and go to Magic Kingdom later in the evening when the festivities begin, instead of paying for a whole day there. Aside from the after hours parties, the parks will get their festiveness on in numerous other ways, like offering seasonal treats and eats, giving certain rides holiday overlays, selling exclusive merchandise, so much merchandise, and a lot more. To experience Disney World during the holidays, try booking a trip earlier before the crowds start to get into the spirit of the season. Park levels will start to peak closer to the time of the actual holiday celebrations. Epcot also has their festivals year round that don't require an extra purchase, aside from your valid theme park ticket. January and February bring Epcot's Festival of the Arts. March into July is Epcot's Flower and Garden Festival. July into November is Epcot's Food and Wine Festival. And December is Epcot's Festival of the Holidays. Each one will have different food and entertainment offerings, so make sure to keep up to date by checking on the Disney website or on the DFB website. We also have festival guidebooks available for download and pre-order at the DFB store. These guidebooks will help you prepare for what to expect from several of those Epcot festivals in 2022 and give you inside tips on how to make the most out of your festival days. Also, double check on the exact days that festivals will be running. There may be a couple of transition days before the end of the previous festival, leading into the new one, and you don't want to accidentally miss out on the festivals altogether. Okay, another great way to guarantee your best Disney World trip is to embrace the rain. Embrace the weather in general. It rains in Orlando. It rains a lot in Orlando, and Disney can't control that. Instead of shying away from these scattered showers, just take advantage of them. Enjoy a different rainy day activity. At Disney Springs, you can duck into a movie over at the AMC Theater, enjoy a round of bowling at Splitsville Luxury Lanes, or catch an evening performance at Drawn to Life by Cirque du Soleil, but reservations are recommended for that one, so keep that in mind. Is your park day scheduled on a rainy day? Don't let that stop you. Crowd levels will more than likely be less intense during afternoon rainstorms, so use that to your advantage. Hit up some indoor rides, watch some indoor shows, and eat at an indoor restaurant. Or don't hide away at all. Dance in the center of the Italy Pavilion in Epcot or splash in the Tomorrowland puddles in Magic Kingdom. Rain will more than likely creep up on you, so you might as well expect it and embrace it. Wear quick drying shoes, bring a poncho and an umbrella, be prepared and just enjoy it. To keep track of the rain, download the AccuWeather app ahead of time to keep track of the hourly forecast. That way you'll have a better idea whether you should hit up an outdoor ride earlier or wait for a bit because you don't want to get caught mid queue line and have a ride shut down on you for inclement weather. That's just no fun, so be prepared and know that if it's going to rain, don't get in line for test track. Number 13 on our list is to pick up celebration buttons. Planning a Disney World vacation to celebrate a special occasion is something we all would love to do. So let Disney know. Disney celebration buttons are available upon request. You can pick them up at the front desk of your Disney hotel or at guest relations in each of the parks. And they're just little pins that you can put on your shirt that basically say, I'm celebrating my birthday. I just got engaged. I'm celebrating my honeymoon. Or you can make up your own button. There's a little space where you can write in what you're celebrating. And a big reason to get and wear these buttons, Disney cast members will know to celebrate along with you. When a Disney cast member notices that you're celebrating a birthday, anniversary, graduation, or another special event, they'll congratulate you. And in some cases, you might get an extra dose of Disney magic at restaurants and other experiences, like maybe a free dessert at the end of your meal. Oh, and let's not forget those celebratory buttons, they are free too. And free souvenirs are great souvenirs in our books. All right, next on our list to guarantee your best Disney World trip, try out Disney Disney's free activities. Buttons aren't the only free things around Disney property. When you pay for a theme park ticket, Disney's got other hands-on experiences you can take part in for no additional cost. In Magic Kingdom, you can join a Pirate's Adventure Legend of the Seven Seas in Adventureland, where you'll embark on an interactive adventure around the land complete with maps, storytelling, pirates, and a special prize. Epcot has multiple free activities for the kiddos. One is located around World Showcase, that's Kidcot. It allows kids to collect special baggies from each country that contain postcards and stickers. If you collect them all, you can redeem them at any Kidcot location and receive a special postcard from the main cheese himself, Mickey Mouse. At Seabase, where the seas with Nemo and friends 
Friends Dark Ride is located, you can pick up a Finding Dory's Friends, a fantastic scavenger hunt booklet filled with facts, activities, and maps around the sea base area. It's a great way to let kids get out that energy and do something fun that isn't them asking for more snacks. If you take a ride on the Wildlife Express train to Rafiki's Planet Watch in Disney's Animal Kingdom, you'll be able to participate in a free sketch class where you'll learn how to draw a popular Disney animated animal with the help of a professional Disney artist. And this is just scratching the surface. As you're hitting up all the different Disney rides and shows, don't forget about the fun and free side attractions along the way. We've got a whole video with 30 free things to do in Disney World. That's totally free for you to watch. Just head on over and watch it next. Number 15 on our list, find a Packing balance. Okay, packing for a Disney vacation is like playing a game of Tetris. At the beginning of the game, things are slow and steady, and you can really focus on what piece of the puzzle can go where for maximum organization. But toward the end of the game, things get hectic. Your once organized pieces are now scattered every which direction, and you're receiving way more items than you started with. It's easy to get overwhelmed. Believe me, I've been to Disney World. I don't know, a million times, and every single time I'm up till three o'clock in the morning packing. At the beginning of a Disney vacation, you've got some more time and energy to organize and pack where everything's nice, folded, and looking spick and span, but by the end of the trip, clothes are scattered around the room, more merchandise has been added to the mix, and you've only got so much time to repack, all on top of being exhausted after days upon days of park fun. Be mindful of what you're packing. You don't want to underpack and forget travel essentials, but you also don't want to overpack and make things more stressful for when you have to repack for the trip home. This is coming from someone that literally just packed an entire duffel of shoes on my last trip. Why? I don't know. Don't ask me why. It happened, okay? So one of my favorite tips is to bring a packable duffel bag. That way you don't have to worry about packing carefully and precisely for everything to get back home in one piece. You can just throw laundry and toiletries in that packable duffel bag at the end of your vacation and you're good to go. Also take time to pack before the morning of your departure, especially if you also have to head out super early. It's better to take some time in the evening to at least start that packing to make sure you've got everything rather than rush to get everything together at the last second and probably leave something behind. But yeah, packable duffel bag, I'm telling you, you will use it every time, probably for shoes. All right, next on our list of 20 ways to guarantee your best Disney World trip is watch the timing. There's not really a flat out wrong time to go to Disney World. You just have to work with what your schedule allows and set your expectations accordingly, but there are definitely busier times in Disney World that you need to be on the lookout for. There are less expensive times in Disney World you might want to prioritize. So when schools are out for an extended period of time, like spring break, summer vacation, Thanksgiving week, you can expect a spike in crowd levels, and you can also expect a spike in prices. Jersey week is also an unexpected time where New Jersey schools have an extended fall break. This happens around the first week of November, and Disney definitely sees a spike in families from New Jersey around that time. Extended holiday weekends also see an increase in guest attendance, like Labor Day and Memorial Day weekend. But again, these might wind up being the only times that you can travel to. Just set your expectations for higher crowd levels and plan your itinerary accordingly. Also plan your budget accordingly, because again, those popular times are also the most expensive. This might be a good time to learn more about the free version of the Disney Genie service on your My Disney Experience app, which will help you plan a schedule to maximize your days in the parks. Or maybe consider budgeting for Genie Plus, which will get you shorter lines when things are real busy. Want to learn more about crowd levels around certain seasons? Well, we've got a video all about the hidden Disney calendar and how certain events can impact your vacation that you never realized even existed. Next on our list of having the best Disney World trip is getting your travel party hyped. Yep, planning can be overwhelming and stressful. While making reservations and budgeting, don't forget to anticipate the vacation with your group and get everyone pumped up for a ton of fun. Having a countdown is a great way to keep your travel party excited, not just for the trip itself, but each day leading up to the trip. Consider creating a 30-day countdown where you do something Disney-fied and fun each day or evening before your vacation kicks off. On one day, you could watch a Disney film. On another day, you could make a Disney-inspired recipe, which we have a ton on the DFB website website if you're interested. And on the day after that, you could have a Disney-themed trivia night with silly dollar store prizes for the winners. 
I know, we all have all the time in the world to do these kinds of things, right? But maybe one or two of them. It's a fun way to bond beforehand while also reminding yourself that yes, this trip may be a lot of work, but the memories you make along the way will be precious. And it's also a really, really good way to get maybe not so cheery members of the family involved in the planning and excited about the trip. Sometimes you've got some folks who aren't super excited about Disney and that's our number 18. Let your group plan with you. This is super important for two reasons. One, an itinerary created where all hands are on deck guarantees that everybody who goes with you will have a say in the planning and will be excited about something on the itinerary, meaning you don't have to worry about one person tailoring the trip around only one person's specific Disney World must-dos and that everybody has a say and everybody will be excited. Reason number two, you don't have to carry the weight of planning everything all alone. Like I said many, many times before, planning can get stressful, so it's nice to have some help along the way from your family, from your friends who are going with you. If you get everybody involved and on board, it's gonna be a much, much better trip. Next on our list for having an awesome Disney World trip, surprise someone in your group with the reservation. Even if your family is helping you plan your Disney vacation, something that's super fun to do is surprise someone or multiple someones in your group with a sneaky reservation. I've heard of people surprising significant others with reservations for Savi's workshop so they can build authentic custom lightsabers in Disney's Hollywood Studios. And I also know one of our writers surprised her dad with an early Epcot reservation so he could see one of his favorite bands perform during a Garden Rocks concert at a Flower and Garden Festival. Surprises are a ton of fun and make for memorable moments that groups can talk about for years to come. That being said, if you want to surprise your fellow party members, make sure you've saved the budget for it. Springing a last minute reservation on someone that they're not prepared to pay for themselves could cause a little more tension rather than fun. So think of it as a full on gift from you to them and prepare to pay the difference. Next on our list of ways to guarantee your best Disney World trip, try a backstage tour. You know what would be another fun Disney activity to surprise your travel party with? Yes a backstage tour. After the 2020 closures, all Disney World backstage tours went on an extended hiatus, but on February 6th of this year, five tours will finally return. Four of those are located in Disney's Animal Kingdom, the less expensive Caring for Giants African Elephant Tour and the Up Close with Rhinos Tour are super, super fun. And like I said, a little less expensive, but for $199 per person, you can experience the Wild Africa Trek, where you'll cross a swinging rope bridge extending over a pool of crocodiles, ride across the Animal Kingdom savanna, and try some specialty snacks along the way. And on Savor the Savannah, you'll not only be able to indulge in African-inspired dishes paired with numerous wine options, but you'll also receive a private safari and viewing area around the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. But let's not forget Magic Kingdom's returning tour, Keys to the Kingdom. This is a five-hour experience that teaches guests about the history of the most magical place on earth, complete with hush-hush ride secrets and tours through Disney's hidden underground utilidors that no one else besides the cast members get to see. This experience includes a break for lunch as well and costs $114 per person. Most of these tours are available for you to book today, so check out the Disney website and book a time before your big trip to experience something new and memorable. All right, everyone, feeling confident about creating the best Disney World vacation ever? Great, so Rapunzel will be so proud. Don't forget, though, you can get all the info I shared today at DisneyFoodBlog.com slash best trip. You can print it out or save it for quick access so you don't forget any of these tips while you're planning your trip for this year, next year, or whenever you're going in the future. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.